think. There we go. All right. Hello and welcome. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Uh, my name is Steve Gellum, and this is what may be our final trip into the Mysterious Dungeons of Sheer and the Wanderer. We are at... We're at a very big point where we're about to fight Reva. The uh, God of Destiny, or the God of Fate, is controlled by uh, the, the Die of Fate. And let's... You know what? Let's just hop into it. Through the magic of television, I, I've gotten us back to Sparrow's Inn. We can do a quick assessment of the equipment that we have there. I mentioned on the last stream that we didn't necessarily need to go all the way through the, the dungeon. And, and based off of my play experience, I would agree that, you know, there wasn't anything that we saw. There wasn't anything that I saw in my off-stream play that was different than anything we had seen on-stream before. So this is, this should hopefully set us up. We're at 144 HP. We found a number of fate scrolls to upgrade our weapon. So we were, I think at the end of the last stream, we were somewhere in the ballpark of like a plus 16 on that Dota Nuki. But we've been very fortunate to find a, a synthesis pot as well as a couple of fate scrolls. So we have built it up quite a bit. In terms of our inventory, we, we have a couple of other Dota Nukis to potentially use for future synthesis. We have an Emerald Bracelet. Let, let's count our healing items, right? The saves that we would have. That's the main thing that we want to do before we go into any combat situation with Sharon. So we I'm already at weeds with one, so I'm used and undo there but we have a revival so one revival one undo two revival three revival two undo three undo and then another revival so we have seven we have a full we have a whole week's worth of revivals here to work with we have a synthesis pot that we may actually gamble with here in a second in the warehouse by the sparrows inn just to free up some of these dononukis that are hanging out in our inventory we have swift grass and live grass we have our synthesis pot right there so i think ultimately oh and i have a fate and an earth scroll here too to go ahead and burn so we will we will go ahead and head to the warehouse which is where any inventory manipulation would happen in a space with npcs so sparrows in has this warehouse here. It's very, very small. Oh, I had a torch. Apparently, it was a nighttime, a nighttime situation. So let's go ahead. And so, how do we want? How do we want to attack this? We have a beast fang too. We have. Well, let's go ahead and read our fate scroll. And that gets us to 31 on the sword. Let's go ahead. And there was an earth scroll there, too. We'll read that. Now. Now, now, now. We can go ahead and put the Donuki in the synthesis pot first. So it'll go in, and then we'll have to do a little bit of futzery with the inventory to get what we want out. So let's go ahead and get both of those out. Your inventory is full. Okay. Um, why don't we go ahead and let's make some room. That should free things up. Okay, we already have one thing in the... So we start at 31. Let's try to remember that. We start at 31 before we synthesize these items. We have a Dodonuki to get. We have... A Beast Fang to get. I 
think that's it. Dull gold edge. Okay. So. Let's see what we've got. I think that's our full... So insert. We put in our Dodonuki first, so it is the lead weapon. It's the base for any synthesis that we would want to do. We start at 30... We start at 31, and we end it up with... Drum roll, please. 33. Well, it's better than what we started with, right? So we will go ahead and throw that to break it. We'll take our 33. Let's check the runes. Extra damage to aquatic monsters. Sealed status. Less proof. Okay. So... It's a decent collection of runes for the Dodonuki to start with. We'll go ahead and see where that takes us. We read our scrolls. We can go ahead and sort out. We did pick up a balance staff along the way for trip traps. I think we are set. We will make one more trip into the store at the Sparrow's Inn. See what we got. Oh, I already, <laughs> I already took a. I've already hit this store, so. Swift staff is a curiosity. I don't know how many times you really want to make an enemy go faster. It's kind of a weird byproduct of just taking all the status effects in your game and and applying them to staves or staves, however you say it. I don't think we're in any danger of going hungry on this trip. There's not enough floors, so I think, really, we have a torch. We should be fine. Famous last words. There's Jirokichi. Only a little further. That's right, little buddy. Eggplant, Kappa. Thank you so much. I'll keep working until the very end. Well... Power of Miracles. Let's do it. So with the Tower of Miracles... So, first off, I don't need the torch anymore. Fortunately, I had to burn an action for the mage to close. I think from here... If I just move one over, either the mage is going to fire something at Jirokichi or the mage is going to close to me. And that could... That will open us up for melee at that point. There we go. Mm. You know, Jirokichi, any time. Any time that you think it would be great to help. There we go. So... One of the things about the Tower of Miracles... Oh, it's going to take me a while to shake this up. Yep. Okay, I gotta do that. Yee. Okay. As I was saying, the thing with the Tower of Miracles is that you have these little launch pads that take you from... They basically send you careening across the map. So you have the open air dungeon, but you also have this sort of teleporter type. <sighs> Rest assured, that's the noise I'm going to make every time that I have a, a strip trap. They never, they, they don't become any less annoying the more that you play this game. I'm sorry to report. So we go here. So you can use these flying that says stepping on the flying floor if you look at the the message log but ultimately it, it comes down to tele uh, like teleporter tiles that take you to different parts of the dungeon and the idea 
is obviously to, to find the exit. It's a little bit trickier because you get to jump through all sorts of teleporter fun times before you get there. Okay. Thank you for that. Grass Papa. We're making our way up the Grass Dude chain here. Oh, we found some grass. Ooh. Chakra Clem. So we have a new ability here. What does it do? Manipulate your internal energy to automatically remove status ailments. It heals instantly. So it's really useful in areas where you may be getting hit with status ailments repeatedly. So we talked about this with the other healing ability that we had for nighttime. And I don't know that we're really going to be in a situation where we would use this. It, it's a no. It's a no for me, dog. Um, what we have with nighttime combat is a need to maximize our actions at any given time. So, because you never know with your limited visibility if you're going to be coming up upon an enemy like that. Just, you know, take one step and there's an enemy. So, a healing ability only has so much, it only is so useful in those situations. If you can get separation from the enemies in a dungeon to buy yourself the time to do that, that's fine. But most of the time, you're, you're burning an action to heal up. And then the enemies are going to get their action as a part of the, the mechanics of Shear and the Wanderer. And, and you're going to be in a situation where you, you heal up your poison or heal up your confusion and then immediately get dinged for it again. It's the same situation that you have with nighttime enemies for straight away heal spells as well. You'll heal up the rest of your HP and then you'll turn around and get decked for 100 more because the enemies still get an action after you take your ability. So ultimately, my philosophy on the abilities is to keep everything focused on offense. The best defense is a good offense sometimes. Let's see what this grass pop-up can get us. And they have power-up grass. Not not really useful. We can go ahead and eat the Tigriso. I guess at this point, if I if I pick up the power-up grass and I have a moment to use it against a boss, I can do that but I don't see a lot of utility there. We have two big bruisers up here before we get to our teleporter tile there. Is it worth staying and duking it out? I think so. There we go. We still have the, the two-on-one with Jirokichi. Another preservation pot. <laughs> I like the animation that Jirokichi had on the flying floor. He does not like being in the air. There's a real moment of panic there. Okay, so we can see... We can see the stairs over there, but we need to find a way to get to them. We were just at... Here, let's go this way. So we were just at the little level, level segment there, and it did not have a downward tile for us to teleport to. So I think... Yeah, it looks like the purple there. It, it even shows on the, the flying floors where they are. So we just have to go down and around. Kind of loop loop back around to that. Did you fly right there. So... Is a grass dude dangerous enough to give up parody to bring Jirokichi in for a team attack? Eh, I, I think he'll be fine. Tigari 
so we can go ahead and eat that too. So I should probably have saved. We'll eat the shrimp grass. I feel like I'm going to be staring at that power up grass, wondering if I've wasted my time with it more than once on this run. I do not have any ranged weapons at this point, so I'm going to have to draw the Huistan in. I do pack punch. Ooh, another bracelet. Oh, the sleepy head. The, that's our custom item, see? So you remember when I said that there's there, there's good news and bad news anytime you get a custom item. The good news is that if it's a really good custom item, you know, then you've made a really good custom item. But if it's but the bad news is that it ends up in the encyclopedia or or the item pool so that it can show up in the dungeon, sometimes repeatedly, so that is something right there. It could have been a good item. It could have been an item that maybe we would have identified or, or used elsewhere. But instead, it was a sleepy head. And here we are. Sail pot. Eh, our inventory is in pretty good shape here. So, of course, I think I, I neglected to mention at the top of the broadcast that, well, wow, that we are Eggplant the Wanderer in honor of the Eggplant podcast. As a member of the Eggplant uh, Discord community, Eggplant, the Secret Life of Games. So that's a podcast that I definitely recommend folks check out. It's a great community as well. Okay. See, that didn't seem too bad. We were, we were looking at overwhelming odds, and we, we pulled it. <laughs> piece of paper. Okay, what, it, what exactly is a piece of paper? Reading this piece of paper has no particular effect. Uh, thanks, Sharon the Wanderer. Thanks. Appreciate it. There's probably some way with synthesis to make this piece of paper something good. I'm going to keep it. I'll throw it in a preservation pot just because... I don't know in all the probably hundreds of hours that I've played this game that I have seen a, a piece of paper. That is a new one. In terms of... Mm, in terms of offense, we're still... We're still doing pretty good on our curve here. take care of that. Well, before I got struck by lightning, what did I get nailed by? No. Doesn't have it on the status. A little pterodactyl type enemy. Okay, so Curse Trap does exactly what it says on the tin. It curses an item, and in this case, we are lucky enough to have a Hide Pot get cursed. We will just chuck that. There's no reason to keep it. And off it goes. Still have not found our exit here. I'm gonna let Jerkichi take point on this one. There we go. Sure, why not? So we've got. There's our stairs. So we're still gradually healing our way back to where we want to be. 
We're still gonna let Jerkichi take point. We're gonna heal our way. Where'd Jerkichi at in terms of health? 105. Okay, still good. Still good. Are we... Okay, that is the thing that hit us for a lot of damage earlier. We've healed up enough that I think we can go ahead and go. So A and B buttons together give you the, the rest. That's where the clock was spinning. Like that. Oh, boy. Well, it's a good thing that we healed up a little bit because now we get to defeat all the monsters in the room to open the door. So let's assess exactly how screwed we are. Uh, that Huisthan only has actions every other turn. The Shaga can pack a pretty decent punch. We have... Uh, we have this guy here with an aura that increases attack, so that's not great. And then we have this dragon type, the small dragon guy. So we can try to draw to this corner here. I, I don't want to burn a swift grass. But I have to be careful here with what... I don't want to burn any of our saves from a healing standpoint either. So let's look at our inventory. What what do we have to work with? We do have a transient staff somewhere, and we this may be the time for us to exploit it. We do have a mage staff as well. So mage staff is unpredictable. But it could be useful to us just to get something with range, since we don't have any other ranged items. I do like the idea of the transient staff. I have a dragon grass here that I can use. Not super keen on it, because I would like to save that for any boss encounters that may be down the line, but we can't get to a boss encounter if we can't get out of this room. So I think the most immediate threat, the, the Huistan here... We'll do lightning. I need to, to probably close to it to take it out first. And maybe in the process, draw these enemies into a more favorable corner. I'm going to keep the transient staff as a, a, a break glass in case of emergency sort of save. So we'll come here. I'm going to come diagonal so that Jirikichi can take point against those guys. That, that Chaga enemy, no joke. So Jirikichi's actually, Jirikichi's in bad shape here too. I do have other healing items that I can hit Jirikichi with if he gets tombstoned here. The level up will help too. What you have to worry about with the, the level up is the monster. Well, what you have to worry about Jirikichi getting killed is the monster leveling up. So the Eligagon became an Eligagon. Or Eligagon. Whatever it is, we really don't want to deal with it. Especially at 37 health. But I don't know. At this point, let's bring it in. Let's draw it back. All right, so where's the transient staff? We'll use that. Take care of him. Let's throw a heal grass, Jirkichi.
Okay. And then let's draw the Shaga back. Is it worth burning the hilarious pot on? You know what? I don't know. I don't remember if we've done this on stream or not. So let's let's open it up and see. <laughs> you know you're in for good times when you hear that off kilter noise. That <laughs> rhyme of the day. Mo seal is even keel. Sudden silliness overwhelms Nashaga. Can't stop laughing. Okay. And then I know Tigariso that I will be very happy to eat here. Trap deletion staff, I'm not as interested in. Get get. Get a free shot at the Huistan. Ooh. Great Dodanuki. Level 7. Still one-shotting spark birds, so that's that's pretty good news. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna use this power of grass. Cause I'm ready to. There we go. That's right. Let's get out of this room. Ouch. Let's get out of this room and see if we can find the exit. This is definitely one of those situations where, where I really would like a navigation scroll. I would really like a lot of things <laughs> that are not going to be in play for this. Let's go ambush the spark bird. What else do we have? Trap deletion scroll, it's sealed. No dice there. Oh, did it say the sun is setting soon? Hmm, okay. We shall see nighttime after all. The seal's pretty good there, that keeps us away from the lightning on the Huistan, but. So mostly, the tension that we're trying to resolve here is how do we get how do we get to the exit without burning too many items, without losing too much of what we have to burn against any boss. I'm going to use the swap staff here. That's not super important for boss encounter, so we'll wave it. Oh no. Okay. Well. So using the swap staff there would have been a great idea with the idea that the NPC wouldn't have gotten killed right away. We don't have that, so we're going to have to take this guy. We're going to have to figure it out. We're going to have to take him on. Let's try the Hilarious Pot to see if we can at least open up some actions against him. Otherwise, I'm going to get nailed for 54 and burn an undue grass here. I heard the stairs on this floor married a wanderer who had kids. Appar Apparently, he's got a stepson now. Oh, boy. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Does Dragon Grass give us more damage output than our regular attack? Let's try it out. 75. 38. Hey, we got a free level up. And that was just enough to buy us time to do that. Now I need to figure out a good healing grass to throw at my 
friend Jirakichi. Yep. Okay. There's a scroll up there, but he has hilarious status. He had hilarious status. Oh, it's a good thing that we risked everything for a sail scroll there. It's unfortunate. Let me go ahead and set those wood arrows. We're going to sit. Yeah. Let's go ahead and get. Eighth floor Tower of Miracles. Oh. You must defeat all the monsters in the room for it to open. So we know we have monsters somewhere. Let's put on our torch. We know whatever that was, it went up and to the right. So it's in range for a concussive cannon. Yeah, and see, now we're at the point where our abilities don't even guarantee a one-shot kill here. Sinister Pork On is, is pretty tough. Let's let's go ahead and use at least the mine 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 because it's in line. The door did open, so that that lets us know. That we have no monsters to worry about. Slowly but surely making our way up the point total. Ouch. Sinister pork on. Let's do a mine mine mine. Mine 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 has a little more power than the concussive cannon at this point, so for one on one encounters with something as beefy as a pork on, I think that's what we want to do. Yeah, we're we are we are burning through we are burning through abilities in a bad way here. I'm gonna have to use a peach. So we have a sleeping tiger there. We're going to go ahead. We're going to do that. Just because we don't know if it's sleeping next to the stairs. Exactly. Ninth floor. Tower of Miracles. Can we do it? Evil Blaze Puff. Evil Blaze Puff. Okay, well, the Porkon is a much more immediate threat. We want to go ahead and take it out. Death go round. Hey, that sounds pretty good. This will create a vortex of energy around you that attacks monsters. The more monsters around you, the stronger the vortex is. Try to gather as many monsters as you can. Uh, I don't really want a lot of monsters to surround me. This is good for farming. If I, if I know I can guarantee that I would survive a shot from a nighttime enemy, that's, that's worth it. But I don't, I don't know that we're in that position right now. We're getting a lot of pork on. A lot of pork on flack. Wow, what was that? Was that like a six for one? So we have a dark chucker, five for one. Okay. Well, it is a monster house. Let's go ahead and use another concussive can and see if we get lucky again. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take that. 
quirky rocks. They're very large rocks. That's the, what they mean. Has a max range of three spaces. I don't know that that... I guess it could be considered a damage upgrade over the wood arrows at this point, but I want the range. I guess what it can do, though, I have plenty of space from a preservation pot standpoint. Let's put them in there. They may be useful later. Maybe. Really? Hey, it's our friend, Sleepyhead. Like a bad penny. Fine Torch doesn't buy us anything. We're gonna have to use a Peach if there's not a... So you can use a Peach to recover the ability <laughs> okay so let's talk let's talk about onigiri status which is one of the worst things that we can be hit with at night so uh when you get onigiri status you turn into an onigiri and you can't have any weapon you can't have any weapons equipped and you make this nice oh wow this is this is gonna be a disaster is what this is. I do not have anything. I don't have anything. This is where that death go round. You know what? I I should have taken the death go round. I wasn't expecting to land on a summon trap, but that is something that shows up in the dungeon here pretty pretty often. So that would have been really useful. I don't know. Can I use abilities? No, I can't even use abilities as an Onigiri. So, we're just gonna have to... We're gonna go down and to the right. We're gonna offer up Jirokichi as tribute to see how many of these things nail Jirokichi. Yeah. We're gonna run for our lives a little bit here until we shake this status. Hopefully the nighttime enemies, they will attack each other. Oh, okay. Well, that's nice. Now what? Let's get our super torch that we have as backup. What can we do here? Will a concussive cannon take this thing out? No. So the hide pot allows us to do this for a little bit. We heal up too. Not not a lot, but just enough that it's worth it. And and that's exactly why we want to do something like that because at least now I have I have enough where I can go ahead and use this peach. Can I bring that porcon into parity with me? Yes. With the Peach in play, we can defend ourselves again, which is pretty much always the overriding question. You can only use, you can only do evasive play for so long in this game sometimes. changing here to reflect our dire situation. Another bracelet. Oh. See? Another sleepy head. Drop. Not for us today. Well, actually it might have been, but because all we have right now is an alert bracelet, but 
not going back at night time to find out. Let's use another mine, mine, mine to take out that guy. We're still trying to find the exit. This has been a very difficult floor for us. What talismans do we have? Confused? No, thank you. Knockback staff. That has some uses. Let's go ahead and we'll pack up the Donanuki. So really at this point, in terms of like the dynamics of play, we're just trying to make a mad dash to the exit. We have healed up qu quite a bit, but that still doesn't mean that we want to sit and trade blows with anything that we come across. We still have a lot of abilities, but that won't necessarily be true with the right encounter. Do I want another torch as a backup just in case I hit another trap? Yeah. We saw that exact situation a minute ago uh, when I got turned into an onigiri, so hopefully. So let's go ahead and do that. Is it worth burning a couple of concussive cannons on the way out? No hits. This is just to see if we get any any winners. Okay. Well, we did some damage there. Can we use our last concussive cannon to finish it off? No. Let's get out. Oh, no. I forgot about that. Good thing I have all my abilities. Okay. No, we don't want to keep going. We need Jirkichi. Where did I leave Jirkichi? Back in the monster lair. That I worked out of earlier. Wow. Expert play here on the stream. As I totally forget the whole reason that we're doing this. I'm using my mind, mind for this. <sighs> okay, let's compare the sleepy head again. Experience points for every action. Oh yeah, it was it was a sleepy head because of the increased HP. Not because it's an alert bracelet. So no. We'll keep we do not want to fall asleep in the dungeon ever. So we will keep that as is. I may have to throw a revival grass here. We are not in great shape. Oh, there's a heal. Okay, so let's do the heal grass. And let's get out of here, man. Oh, yeah, just in time. Miracle Alcove. face of creation, the face of destruction. The incarnation of Great Reba, god of space and time. Two sides of the same coin. Must have promised you something in the destiny room. Are you here to roll the miracle dice? Roll the dice. Let us see if you can turn back time for the dead girl. If you roll the highest possible total on the dice, I will revive the girl. However, to revive that girl, someone else must shoulder the burden in her place. If the, 
girl's fate is changed. Someone else must be given the fate that she had. If you roll the dice, you may save the girl, but in exchange, you will die here and now, Jirokichi. I am twisting space and time to save a life. Death and life must balance each other. A zero-sum game is that, is the rule of the universe. Jirkich is a real one. He will do it. I like how they saved that that picture there for this moment. A challenge, you say? Yeah, yeah. Kappa, by the way, remember that we have a torch equipped from the last floor before you go challenging to God of Time and Space? How does human intend to challenge God? Well, as it turns out, <laughs> I believe, I believe in the power of the eggplant. Yeah. Okay. How do we feel about boss encounters in, in roguelikes exactly? I know this is a point of contention for a few different people in the eggplant community. Have at it. <laughs> but enough talk. Have at you. <laughs> well, okay. So thanks for that. The equipment came off. Yeah, well, let's start with the shield. You will be hit by lightning. Well, thanks for that. Can we do a seal talisman here to keep that lightning from happening? Worth a shot. Nope. Blasted away. So we burned an action there for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, boss encounters and roguelikes. They're, they're awesome. So let's... 74. That's right on the line. We're not going to get a lot of value out of healing. If I get one shot and then I just burn... I have seven... I burned one of my saves. I have seven saves here between undos and, and revivals, and we're we're not going anywhere right now, so let's go ahead and take our yeah, another be hit by lightning. Well, so dying like that took out our took out our swift grass. We can do another one though. Is it worth burning? The invincible grass may come into play here. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do. I want the actions while I'm I'm closed in. So let's use that. Ooh. 
swinging. That's okay. That one wasn't too bad. Here's the lightning. Fine. Monsters will rain from the heavens. Fine. Now we can have good mileage out of that heal pot. Let's open it. <laughs> Apropos of nothing, monsters began to descending from the sky. Of course, these are dragons. <sighs> Excuse me, God of time and space, I have a stand-up routine to do. What do you call Porky with a sunburn? Oh. Bacon! Oh, I sealed it. Oh, it took status ailments. Just us staying in the pocket right now while we have the hilarious status. I don't want to burn time on the the minions. We will go ahead and use that invincible grass though. Actually, yeah, let's do it. forever. Thank you. How long will that invincible status hold? That was Invincible Grass right there. The Invincible Grass did some serious work for us on that encounter. So we did it. Unless you roll tens, the highest number on the dice, the girl's life will not return. The laws of the dice cannot be bent. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Happy fireworks. <laughs> you people are so lucky. Fire. 